Coming up on Tech News today, it's our biggest stories of the year. We're going to go through all the big things, talk about the implications, and there's some weird patterns that we find. All that and more coming up. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Tuesday, December 27th, 2011. Tech News Today is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All streamed directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm Aya Zaktar. And I'm Jason Howell. And this is the show where we look at the biggest and best stories of 2011. Uh, tomorrow's this show, specific show is going to be That's an open mic do. episode, at the end of which, because I know the future, I will accidentally promote this show. <laughs> How but could you possibly know that? After tomorrow's show, on Thursday, we will have our best of 2011 best of show. Or you 2011. could just watch them out of order, too. So you I'm can download them and watch it in any order. in advance. So this is best as in biggest. This is like biggest Rather than best as yeah. in Best of 2011 is like our favorite moments of the show. Right. Uh, that's more. It's more self-involved. It's more navel-gazing <laughs> yeah. Thursday. Saying, this is the this wider is where view. Tom says, this notable. is where I sounded really smart for two minutes. Yeah. And Sarah and I has talked to each other in IRC, <laughs> <laughs> for example. And this is when I tossed to them, and they went, huh? Huh? They went, what? <laughs> what? I said, we have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. I was thinking I has in IRC. Sorry. All right. Uh, yeah, let's start up. Obviously, the biggest story uh, of 2011, as far as coverage and impact and attention, uh, was the death of Steve Jobs. And, and when we were going back looking at all the stories of the year, uh, it kind of impacted me how this story really did start playing out in January mm -hmm. when Steve Jobs announced that he was uh, taking his medical leave again, his second medical leave. Right. It's, it's strange timing, too, that it happened truly at the beginning of 2011. And then, um, obviously, the iPad 2 uh, uh, arrived mid-March. Mm -hmm. Um, so much hype over whether the iPhone 5 was actually going to materialize, ended up being the 4S. The day before Steve Jobs passed away was the announcement for the 4S. Right. Where it was the first time he wasn't up on stage. All eyes were on the company. Everyone thought, boy, they seem a little off. And then it be became clear later that there was obviously a lot playing into why uh, uh, Tim Cook and team were a little off. And yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it was it was huge. Well, that and like Tim Cook had stepped up like when Jobs took his first medical leave last year, and uh, Tim Cook was running Apple for a, a pretty um, for a long time during this year. So uh, I, I remember when uh, when Steve Jobs died, people were panicked. They're like, okay, is this is Apple's stock gonna go into the toilet? There's no, there's no way they can come back. I mean, what's Apple without Steve Jobs? But the thing is, it seems like the entire market corrected for this a long time ago. Everyone's been prepared for it. was hard to say prepared for this. People knew it was coming, but not like exactly the day. that I was braced like, for it. Yeah. It was just a, like a horrible surprise kind well, of thing. Well, and Steve Jobs was on stage at WWDC mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. as, as recently as June. Uh, so, you know, it was, it was not shocking but surprising, I guess, yeah. if that makes sense. It was sense. not unexpected. Uh, we just didn't expect it right then. No, and, and I, I remember the exact moment. I, I know uh, probably all geeks watching this remember the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I know that Jason and I were here, and he sort of leaned over and said, oh, my gosh, look at this. Tom and Leo were uh, live on Triangulation. Kevin and it was, Marks, yeah. And it was the sort of thing that w we needed to interrupt. Um, and, yeah, it was just it was a very shocking thing. Tom, I agree with you that... No, this is not unexpected for someone who's been sick for a while. Certainly not unexpected. But at the same time, it felt very surreal. For someone as private as Steve Jobs, too, it was a difficult story to cover on a tech news show because you don't want to pry into someone's private life. Yeah, he's a public figure and he's in charge of a business, and there, there are those arguments to be made. But as a tech news show, it doesn't matter uh, what's up with his pancreas or his liver uh, mm -hmm. for Apple products. And so it's it really kind of none of our business, but everybody's curious. Everybody wants to know. So we tried to walk that line. And what I think is so interesting to me is after his death, 
we learned so much more about the man. There was the Walter Isaacson book. There mm -hmm. were several documentaries. Mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of people came forth and started, you know, giving their recollections. We had Daniel Kotke on triangulation, and he he sort of, you know, went through some of his recollections of Steve Jobs. I, I, I it's amazing that in death, Steve Jobs has been one of the most open books uh, of any tech CEO that we've ever had. And for better or for worse, too. It's not as if Steve Jobs is this, uh, you know, was this uh, lovable, cuddly guy. In most respects, people say, wow, you know, he was really, he was a genius, but a jerk. Yeah. You know, he did things that really upset people. He, he hurt abrasive. people's feelings. He was abrasive. I know that when uh, uh, we, we covered, uh, you know, at length, Steve Jobs' life and death on Twit, I had a really hard time keeping my composure for the first week. It was like when I would start to talk about it, I would start to choke up a little bit. And it was like, it wasn't really because it was almost the magnitude of yeah. the way I knew that other people felt. The story, personal stories that were started to come out from people who had maybe just had a tiny interaction with him once. You know, or, 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 or like things like Brian Lamb or talking Brian about Lamb's, his interactions yeah, over with the, the stolen iPhone. Yeah, and 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 just the sort of the outpouring of emotion really got to me, and it 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 was it was almost hard for me to um to contain. And his death also bumped up the release of the, the biography. I mean, that thing was supposed to come out, I think, in November, but it came out all the way in it October. It was originally supposed to come out next year, mm -hmm. then they moved it up when he went on medical leave. In the final chapters, you, you know, Jobs knows it's, it's coming, and so he's much more, it seems like, forthcoming in, in, in the book. It's interesting to see that, especially now, because you have a different uh, idea of, of what he was like from, from growing up and, and just picking these products out of, like, out of his head. These are really odd things to do. Like, oh yeah, we'll have a touchscreen thing. Let's let's work on a tablet, and then publicly say we're not working on a tablet. It's just fun. To, yeah. You know, it's nice to see that. You know, it's interesting too. Is uh, this? You know, we're not too distant from his death, but at this point, there are still Apple rumors, mm -hmm. just like there've always been. The hype around them is just like it's always been. Mm -hmm. Nothing has changed to me in the flavor of news around Apple, except that. Uh, references to the Isaacson book pop up and and there's a little more known about what Jobs thought about this or that but but otherwise it's it's same old same old for now well that and I think in the book there's this mention of like there's this one protected area with five years worth of products ahead yeah and that everyone was salivating like what did you see Isaacson what did you see <laughs> he would not say obviously yeah, yeah, that's, say. I think this will all the, the next year is going to be every year is big for Apple but Right now, the Apple TV, the true Apple TV oh, rumors yeah. are as crazy as they've ever been. Uh, and, and just, you know, what, what's going to happen with iPad 3, for example? I mean, all of that stuff over the next, I think, 12 months is really going to shape the way that people see Apple going forward. Because yeah. right now, it's just, it is sort of business as usual. We'll, we'll, have a, we'll, we'll have a different view of Apple at this time next year. It'll be interesting to see what kind of view it has become. Exactly. Our second story, uh, HP, the <laughs> rise and fall. Uh, from announcing the release of the touch, from announcing the touchpad to yep. the release of the touchpad with the new web OS to six weeks later killing the touchpad to Leo Apotheker uh, talking about selling the personal systems group with PC and web OS to Apotheker losing his job to Meg Whitman, former gubernatorial candidate in the state of California and eBay CEO coming off the board of HP after she had been appointed to the board in the wake of Mark Hurd's departure taking over the company. I mean, we're not even wait, done yet. And then, and then saying, keeps... we're going to make a decision swiftly and then saying, well, we need to make a decision. They made a decision swiftly on the personal systems group. Right. We're going to keep it. Yeah. But then it took a little longer for WebOS, which they have now open sourced. Wow. I mean, I was just thinking about the touch, and then don't forget the all the HP touchpad fire sales that got everyone excited. That made the HP touchpad the number two tablet in one quarter right of this year. Right before it got killed. Exactly. Well, actually, no, it was after it got killed because they they were selling them at ninety nine bucks, and it. Oh right, that's right. It got a then huge, people said maybe it shouldn't die. A huge install base and selling like hotcakes. I, I mean, wow, it was just a tremendous thing. Forty nine days it was killed faster than the Kin, and that was killed really fast. So I was shocked to see this happening. But people weren't buying the Kin. Period. Oh, yeah, that had a whole pricing st structure issue. I mean, I think yeah. they were marketing it with plans that were like smartphones, and it's a feature phone, and that was a whole mess there. But HP, which is still, I think, the number one PC manufacturer out there, right, they, by volume. They sell lots of these things. So it was so strange to see this company kind of start flailing around. It's like, you know what you're doing, right? What, what happened? I, this, this whole year has been strange. But at All least because Whitman, Mark Hurd... It was accused of dallying with someone he shouldn't have dallied with, whatever mm -hmm. that means. 
because uh, it's changed over time. Mm-hmm. What they but they 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 forced him out. That's where it started. And then they get Leo Apotheker from SAP. Uh, he doesn't do what they want. He does what he he does. Right. He's an enterprise software guy. So he's like, so let's become on. IBM. Made sense to me. Uh, but then they're like, no, we don't want to do that. You're out. Uh, but why would they have to be IBM? IBM's IBM. HP is the number one PC manufacturer. Why not go out and keep doing what you're doing? I mean, you they built the reputation on well, this. Well, the, the there was a very good reason for that, which is personal systems group and, a, and, and PC manufacturing has very small margins. Mm-hmm. So you're not making as much money. If you Just because one company is doing something doesn't mean that another company can't do it better. And HP w- is already doing a lot of what IBM does. So what they're saying is like, hey, there's room in that market because not enough other people are providing that service. And we think we can provide a good service and make a lot more money there than we can make in the PC business. I think that all makes logical sense. It's just that HP didn't want to do it. They, the, the HP tradition, the HP way, all of that was against changing the company in that manner. Well, that and HP apparently was trying to sell their personal service uh, systems group years ago, like last year, I think. There was a rumor that Samsung was going to buy them, which was this led to a yeah, bunch but of... that was not nearly as public as this Right, time. this yeah, one, this year was, was killer for Samsung saying, we're not going to buy WebOS. We're telling you we're not doing this. We're not going to yeah, buy HP's PSG. Not now, PSG, not none ever. Of it. Yeah. Let's move on to a, an even more bewildering story, the saga of Netflix. <laughs> it kind of mirrors HP. Uh, which, uh, which actually played out in a short, shorter period of time, but uh, Netflix announced a price change. So they went from having a, uh, a a price. I think it was what was it nine ninety nine. Well, it was I, I, for if you wanted I to have DVDs and with, streaming. I think it was seven ninety nine, wasn't it? No, seven ninety nine was the streaming only always. But I thought there wasn't that much more to get the DVDs. Oh yeah, yeah. I, th- I think they, it was nine ninety nine. They for basically both. said, "Well, you're going to have seven ninety nine for DVDs, seven ninety nine for streaming. Yeah, two separate accounts. Right. We then figure that most o- people want one or the yeah. other. Then not only two separate accounts. Two separate websites. Two separate companies. We're spinning off the DVD company to be Quickster. Q W I K S T E R. They did you know, that announcement via video with with who would be the CEO <laughs> of Quickster and Reed Hastings sitting there like at a park bench or something explaining. Well, like, he, it like he was an table. everyman. They were just talking about park benches. Like, yeah, you know, this is the way it's going to be, and you're going to love it. And then they ran around. They just they threw it out entirely because the backlash was ridiculous. Well, first they first they apologized for the price increase. But it it kind of kind of moderately apologized. Said we know you so know we offended. know we handled the communication wrong. Yeah, they said but we're not changing. It. Listen, we changed the price. What we did wrong was not explaining to you sooner why we change why we split up these two com- companies, right? Mm-hmm. Because we're actually we're truly splitting up the companies. We're not just. Uh, splitting up uh, the 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 account options that people well, can that, have. Well, that was the hilarious part. Is they said, "Look, we, we're we're sorry about the price change. We're not changing it, but we are going to split into two confusing <laughs> companies. One called Quickster. Yeah, and they didn't. Uh, lock there's up. your context. Yeah. Now it makes sense, right? You know, it's funny. Before the show, I knew that we were going to talk about the Netflix story because it's a huge story. And for the life of me, I couldn't even remember the name Quickster. That's how quickly. Oh, you don't the, remember from the Twitter account? No, I mean, didn't I, lock up? I, I remember it when it, just it was like your... it was high on the joke meter mm-hmm. for a good yeah. what two weeks yep. before that whole thing uh, went uh, splat. Yeah, I couldn't remember it, and then I couldn't remember how to spell it. Uh, and and they also the you know a side sidebar to this story is their difficulties with stars. Uh, mm-hmm. They are losing their star streaming contract in January. Uh, but at the same time, going out and signing all kinds of deals for original content, like House of Cards, a new uh, series of Arrested Development episodes, uh, a few other, uh, few other originals that won't bear fruit till probably 2013. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, and then signing a Pixar for a distribution deal and and trying to, you know, battle against the industry, which is starting to say, eh, we think Netflix has too much power and we don't want them to become another Apple. I mean, there are rumors that there are other services out, like Verizon, looking into getting to the stream service but the strange thing is even though netflix has faltered like crazy and lost a lot of its market value there's really still not like an amazing competitor i mean amazon prime is getting there but there's not like oh yeah there's netflix and then this other other guy that's really good like a coke pepsi kind of thing because mm-hmm. netflix is still like it they're on every freaking a, piece of hardware yeah, there's lots of competitors service. but there aren't any that are usually rated to be the same amazon prime instant is close they're getting there. blockbuster is actually close they have a streaming service uh then there's things uh, I'm trying to remember that. Well, there's Voodoo, but that's that's the, from Walmart. Yep. Yeah, uh, the, there's Redbox is, is talking about getting into a streaming version. And then there's all those VOD there's services. There's Hulu, right? Well, that's kind Which of. Which you can do Hulu Plus, and then you get more, even though you have to have commercials. So, 
Yeah, but there's not like a one-to-one competitor yeah, there's, there's to not it. Not yet. I mean, and this would be would be the year that this should have happened. But I'm, I'm thinking next year we're probably going to see a serious number two competitor because Dish yeah. is kind of they're kind of like doing a soft launch with their blockbuster plan that works with Dish. But it's only a matter of time before they open that up wider to see. I mean, I'm pretty sure this was just a test to see if their servers could handle the load. Well, Netflix said uh, as soon as you know some of these very disgruntled Netflix users said, "I'm canceling. I'm never coming back." Said, "Listen, we ha we get a lot of turnover annually anyway. So yeah, there's there's maybe some more turnover based on certain circumstances. People upset about pricing increases or splitting up companies, but we sort of get this anyway, and it will write itself because historically this is what happens with Netflix. They didn't know." quite the backlash that they were about to get. Um, I don't think that the Netflix executives, even if they think that privately now, still would be saying that sort of thing publicly. Yeah. Uh, because they, they lost a lot of users. Whether they'll gain them back, I think we need a few more months to see if they do write themselves uh, as 2012 begins. Well, I've got a few ideas of what I think is going to happen in the next year. We'll save that for our predictions Ooh. show, which is coming later this week. Uh, let's move on to the PlayStation Network. Wow. Uh, that was like an explosion of story in the middle of the year. It's kind of trailed off now mm -hmm. uh, but essentially the PlayStation Network went down and I remember the day it went down because I looked at it and I was like should we cover this I'm like eh, outages <laughs> you know outages happen all the time they're not that interesting let's let's see how long it goes it went on for a month yeah a month of an outage uh, a horrible hack uh, what, they, the credit card database was taken although they still say they never they think it was encrypted and nobody got any credit cards uh, from it however they did make everyone change their passwords uh, they did give everyone uh, free credit card monitoring in the For United year. States. They gave uh, they gave away a bunch of free games that you could download. A bunch of free old not, games. Not, not games of your choice. Not games you of could, your choice. You could choose from a, a limited list. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this the one that actually, this is the one that affected 77 million accounts? Yeah. Right? I'm just like because there was a couple other hacks that happened to Sony eventually. But I mean, considering what a a colossal like mess this was, I think Sony's actually done quite well recovering in the span of the year after it. I mean. I don't know if people even remember this. It's kind this of impressive how little it's brought up these days. There were the mm -hmm. reverberations where, for a month afterwards, there were PSN hack stories coming up every day. Mm -hmm. PlayStation mm -hmm. Network hacked again. Oh, it turns out it wasn't that big of a deal. Or it wasn't actually a hack. Or, you know, it was like everyone was waiting for that other shoe to drop, but it never happened again. I think, yeah, I think it, it was, I mean, good on PlayStation for recovering to the extent that, I mean, we talked about this every day for a month. Oh, yeah. Against mm -hmm. our will. We didn't yeah. want to. No. We had to. Did we have a bumper at some point? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah. It, yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah. it was totally. like, and now for the PlayStation kind, story of the yeah, day. PlayStation hack of the day. Still story. out. Yeah. Network still not up. Uh, but, yeah, we, we it's, it's not really as if there are that many jokes to make about it anymore. Uh, I think that um, these sorts of things are really blips on the radar of a successful company. Um, if indeed that's all it is. You know, a month out of a good five-year uh, uptick for uh, any network is really not that big a deal. All right, let's take a they quick break again. and uh, thank our sponsor. If you're like, you know, I never heard about that Netflix thing you were talking about earlier and you want to try it out, you can get it for free for 30 days, netflix.com slash twit. Uh, perfect gift to give to someone this holiday season. If you forgot one and you're like, oh, crap, it's almost New Year's. I should give them something. Give them 30 days free Netflix. Netflix.com slash twit. We thank them for their support of Tech News Today. All right, a couple more stories before we wrap up here. Music streaming, huge story all year long because of the different people getting into the space or innovating on what they'd already been doing. Uh, for instance, Apple with iCloud and iTunes Match, the ability to store your songs in the cloud, uh, have them upgraded. Uh, if you paid $25 a year, it was sort of seen as an amnesty situation for your, for your music because they wouldn't ask you where you got it. They would just store it and legitimize it, and you'd be, you'd be good, and you would have paid some money for it. Uh, there was also Amazon Music, uh, which uh, w allowed you to buy Amazon Music and have it automatically stored in the cloud for free. You didn't have to pay extra if you bought it from Amazon. They also have an Amazon upload storage. And, of course, with the Kindle Fire coming out, uh, the Amazon Cloud Player plays into that. Uh, and we have Google Music. Which Google Music started with launched a, in beta early in the year an and service. then became a, a legitimate service later. In yeah, the I mean, I mean, both Amazon and Google, I think around the same time, had that upload service kind of thing where you could have their cloud player if you wanted to and you could access your stuff through the web. So that was all right. But everyone was like, when is Google going to actually have their own streaming service? And then all it seemed like for months it was, when is Spotify getting here? When is Spotify getting here? When is Spotify getting here? Yeah, that's right. It's amazing. 
And when and it then did, Spotify got here. When it landed, people were like, okay, why is this different than RDO or MOG or this or that? And it's really, it's really not a whole lot of It's still the, the, the biggest like hyped music service out there for subscription. And it's become a subscription versus storage battle now. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Different people like different things depending on how they consume music. And a lot of people are trying to place their bets on which one's going to win. Will it be a Spotify or an RDO or a MOG? Or will it be an Amazon or an iTunes? Or is somebody going to come up with some combination we've been waiting for something like spotify announces a store or itunes announces a subscription service nobody's really crossed that line yet i mean itunes match has works really Zoom. well for people like tom i know who have big collections you're not comfortable just saying okay well forget my 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 all the storage i have that's filled up with music i'll just stream songs when i want to hear about them because you've you've taken many years and and a lot of time and effort to organize the cl collection that you have Something like iTunes Match is great for that. Match everything, put it in the cloud. In many cases, people could wipe out uh, their local uh, 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 storage of that music if they feel comfortable enough because that's what it's good for. But, I, I mean, I'm, I think this is year of the streaming. I think that it's going to take a while for people to, um, to get on board with the, the idea that having the physical file is not necessary to listen to a song that you like. But I absolutely love... Uh, love the streaming services. And I think it's great that we have so many sort of hybrids of both so that for now, you don't have one service that does it all, but you have a lot of services that do a lot of things well. Spotify gets the most hype, but uh, it's certainly not the only streaming service that's awesome. Yeah, so it's, it's funny that uh, digital rights management went away from music and we've got all of these great digital music services that people are paying money for. Exactly. Maybe video services might take a hint from that. That's crazy talk. <laughs> I know. Uh, also, kind of tying into this, the Amazon Kindle story, I just I want to bring it up because I noticed over the course of the year how this story was playing out and we didn't even realize it. Yeah, no uh, kidding. There was the, the Amazon App Store for Android that was brought out. And I'm like, well, that's odd. Why are they doing that? And then there was Amazon instant prime streaming well that's weird why would they bundle that into their shipping service and then there was the music store and the music situation and then all of a sudden we get the tablet rumors and then the kindle fire comes out and ties all that stuff together and makes it have an advantage i mean one advantage is the price so another advantage is certainly not the hardware it's average hardware but the big advantage it has is all of these services including the kindle bookstore obviously that tie in together yeah, that was something that the other type of manufacturers had so much trouble with like pre-establishing some kind of ecosystem and amazon slowly did that during the year you'd buy your movies and, oh yeah i have it on amazon or you buy your music i have it on amazon now I have a device that plays all this stuff right there. And, I mean, Amazon's been stingy with their, with their I guess, compatibility. It's not, there's no iOS. As far as I know, iOS applications that can play your Amazon videos or your music unless you go through, like, the cloud and you have some kind of way to go around Flash, I guess. But it's really – it's a smart way to get people locked in. So I was, I was pleasantly surprised to see some kind of competitor – to the iPad, I know people don't, they've been arguing all year, is it a competitor with the iPad or not, but it is. I think, yeah, I mean, they are not direct competitors, obviously. The iPad does a lot of things that the uh, that the Kindle Fire doesn't do. What the Kindle Fire is very much tied into the Amazon ecosystem in a way that the iPad isn't. They are two different devices, but finally, for all of the Android tablets that didn't do as well as a lot of people hoped, the Kindle Fire is... I, I think, especially for the holiday season, the tablet that people now ha have a choice. And for that very reason, it is a competitor because when it comes down to the buying decision for people saying, I want to get a tablet for so-and-so, yeah. they're probably not buying Kindle Fire and an iPad for that person. They're buying one or the other. Absolutely. And uh, a lot I, of times I price them, will I tape one otherwise. to the other. I just paste it to the back. <laughs> You've got the best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I turn it into uh, an entourage or, you know, one of those, what was the Microsoft... Courier. The courier. Oh, yeah, courier, make, make yes. my own courier that way. <laughs> you have to tape them a certain way, though, so that you don't cover up the iPad's camera. Yeah, right. So it true. takes a little skill. Like, skill. like yeah. the, old, yeah. the old nook. You have a screen on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's only one way to finish up the biggest stories of the year. Hit it, Jason. Yeah. You know you wanted it. Patrick Wars. <laughs> oh, boy. Here's the story. <laughs> Samsung, HTC, Motorola, Microsoft, uh, Apple, Apple, and about five or six other companies I'm forgetting all suit each other. Yeah. That's it for our Biggest Stories of the Year episode. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. You can find us on the web at twit.tv slash TNT. Uh, you can email us, TNT at twit.tv, and give us a call. 
although we were not t- playing the voicemails until after the first of the year, 260-TNT show. Happy holidays, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow with our open mic episode. Looking forward to that.